Hi, my name is Samantha Delabono, uh, and this is Professor Dr. Bubar. Um, we already met him. Um, we work together on our printer bot to make 3D printed prosthetics. Um, 3D printing is changing the world, and I got so interested in it. And when he told me about we got a 3D printer, I was like, oh, I want to do something really fun. So here's a couple examples I have up here. We can 3D print a turtle a shell to alleviate a painful condition. We can send a design to the space station because there's a 3D printer on the space station and it's so much cheaper that we can send a design instead of launching a, a mission to take the tool up there. And right now in the medical field, we're already printing, 3D printing uh, parts of the body and they're currently working on trying to do organs. So these are just a, co a couple of common commercial prosthetics the one all the way at the end over there is called a com cosmetic prosthetic arm. It has no motion in the hands. The one in the middle is called the split hook prosthetic and only grabs and closes with the hook. And this one is called the myoelectric prosthetic and it has muscle mo movement feature where it can close the hand. Does anyone want to guess how much each one is? Anyone? Pretty, pretty close. Um, the cosmetic arm, all the way at the end, $5,000. The one in the middle, the split hook, $10,000. And these hands, they run from $20,000 to $100,000, depending on how advanced it is. So we worked with this group called Enable. This group was started in 2013. It started with a bunch of guys that wanted to help, you know, do some cool designs. Well, one of the gentlemen in the group this, uh, had a son that had a disability where he had, his son had no fingers. So he learned how to design and 3D print a hand for him that he can use. He's the little boy on the left in that picture. That's the first child that's received the 3D print hand by this organization. Um, this little girl right here, she's one of the first children that received hands as well. Her name is Shay. Um, recently, she actually wanted to learn how to play violin. Well, the hand's not, you know, has that functionality where she can really hold it. Well, one of those volunteers designed a bow holding device where she can actually hold a bow and learn how to play violin. I have a video at the end I can show if I have time, but it's really amazing. It's her second day practicing, and it's just, like, blows my mind because I could not play that well on my second day. Um, this, this group has done so much around the world already. They're like, I have a map later in the slides that shows how much they're doing. So we started with our first project, which is called the sideboard hand. This hand has 20 screws in it. Um, it's, not, it's really hard to assemble. I had so t difficult time assembling this hand. Um, so I, it's OK. Uh, there's a bunch of screws. It's not completed, really. This was my first print. I call it the baby hand because it's kind of small. Um, it's not really, it doesn't have screws in it because I didn't have screws that fit that size, but it's just like, you know, a test print. Um, I went to a conference in September and they introduced the Raptor hand. The Raptor hand is a lot easier to assemble. All these screws in these hands versus this one, these are all 3D printed. These are 3D printed as well. Right here, 3D printed. Only there's only seven screws in this hand versus the 20. This hand, I so much easier to assemble. I can assemble this hand in an hour. That one, I I couldn't even assemble that. That took like a whole week, and I still had trouble. Like I just I was tired of it by the end of that. I was like I'm done. So I learned how to assemble it. I actually made a manual. So anyone ever wants to become a volunteer, I have a manual that tells you how to assemble it. Um, this was actually built on one of their printers at the conference. This is actually built on our printer. This is like an adult size hand. <laughs> so the different printers. So Enable actually has the MakerBot, which is a $3,000 printer. Kind of pricey. Ours is $600. $600. There's no 
difference in the quality, except maybe if I print it on this one, this one, maybe have to sand paper down a couple edges to be smoother, but it worked the same. It works just fine. It can close with the muscle, like the wrist will be here, and all they do is move it to close. Um, the only big difference in this is the printing time. It takes me a whole day to print a hand on the $600 printer printer bot because it's kind of a small printer. It's not that big. Uh, the maker bot, it takes like an hour to print a whole hand, but the quality is the same. And I feel like that's really important about the two printers. And right now they're working on, uh, they actually have $300 printers out. So maybe that'll be future research and doing it on a $300 printer. So stuff to calibration, this is the most difficult of understanding 3D printing is calibration. So I have a couple examples with me. So I'm going to show you, I have this like caught on here. I'm going to show you the 3D printer. This is our 3D printer. I don't have it hooked up because I didn't want to calibrate it. <laughs> this is the printer bed. There's printer, uh, painter's tape on it. The reason why there's painter's tape is when it melts onto the bed, it's really, really hard to take off. So painter's tape, all you do is lift it off and it comes off. It's a lot easier. Um, this is where the plastic will melt. I don't have plastic on here, but plastic will go through this little hole right here, all down here, it'll melt, and then there's a little point usually right here, and it'll start printing in layers. So it prints in later, layers. So that's how you kind of figure out how you calibrate is because of that. Well, this one, a stringy, print that didn't really finish, that's when you know the bed needs to be leveled in a different way. So this is the bed, needs to be leveled. The temperature, so sometimes your temperature maybe not be hot enough to print something, so you kind of get like not smooth edges, that's when you know temperature needs to be fixed or you know just maybe a little lower depending. And then you get gloopy prints, like it's almost done but not really, it'll like get like this at the end. and. It's probably because it's printing too fast, maybe at the end or something like that, where it'll just like maybe be too fast around there, but it's okay at the rest. And there's times where you need support on your prints. I don't have like an example of what support looks like, but it's just a support that you need to help maybe level it where it will print okay, which I think this one was without support, the top picture. That's what I came back after six hours and I was pretty upset. Or either, you know, sometimes the little extruder gets clogged. So when it gets clogged with plastic, I have to go and unclog it, and there's nothing printed on it. So it doesn't really help me out when I come back in six hours and there's nothing there. So the assembly of the rafter hand. So I think I kind of told you a little bit already, but these are screws right here that hold the fingers on. There's 3D printed screws in each finger. and I would say the difficult part about this is the tension you need to get onto the hand with the strings because the tension is just, it's so hard, like you don't want to do too much but you don't want to do it too less where it won't close all the way. Um, I, I say like the easiest thing was the screws this time. I enjoyed like being an easier assembly. And I can show you guys, it closes, opens, works. So the matching system, I was talking about this earlier. So this is the enable map currently. This is, each little color represents something different, but the red color is volunteers that want to print hands. There's a lot of red on there. We are Merry Mouth, so we have our little red dot. We have to, before they can put us on the map, send a hand, so I, we send a hand to them on our $600 printer saying that you know we can do this and they, you know, evaluate the hand and tell us that they'll put it on. And this was on our $600 printer versus the $3,000 one. So basically same quality, nothing wrong with it. So anyone can probably get some $600 and get a printer, the same quality as the $3,000 printer. And right now there's 1,000 recipients that need hands and there's 3,000 volunteers. And recently they just got hands in China and Turkey. That's just incredible how much they care to get to even low income countries. And they really like try to give these hands for free. At the conference I went to, every child got their hand for free, no cost. So now they are doing some theme hands. So 
I think everyone knows what Frozen is. This is an Elsa 3D print in hand. <laughs> she has some um, snowflakes, and then the child's name is on the side. And I'm assuming the white fingers for making it feel like magic is going on. <laughs> um, so the middle picture, this child wanted, he couldn't decide if he wanted Spider-Man or Batman. So they just, the volunteer just printed them both. So he can just literally, whatever he feels like being the one day, he can just put on whatever he wants. And then we have a couple other superheroes. This one's a Hulk, Captain America. Now the Iron Man hand's pretty cool. Some volunteers actually put a glowing feature on the hand. That's pretty cool. And then the Wolverine, big claws, but they actually have a claw attachment. And it's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty cool what they have. But these are just some examples that they do that make these kids have confidence. Even at the conference, I can see how much confidence these children have from these hands. Like They just felt so great about feeling complete. And they're just trying to make it a trend now. Even kids with hands, they want to make it a trend where they're like, I want to be like that cool kid that has the cool little Spider-Man hand. So this guy, his name is Jose, and he had a $42,000 uh, myoelectric prosthetic hand, and he was given a $50 printed, uh, 3D printed hand from an Able. And I have a video to tell his story. Everyone heard that. It's crazy how they are comparing that and how he likes the 3D printed hand more than his $42,000 hand. I think that if they could supply any dis anyone with a disability a 3D printer, a $600 3D printer, or a $3,000 3D printer, and the materials, which are $50, they could give these to all families and they can make their own hands and when something breaks they can just you know print it it's just that easy as much as insurance is paying for these prosthetics it's so much cheaper to just get on the 3d printer and just the materials and does everyone want to see the violin video do I have time yeah. okay well it's a minute so that works This is her second day using this bow device. And if anyone's interested, if you're interested in volunteering, Dr. Bubar, right in the front here, give them your name. We, we have like two 3D printers now, so if you want to help out, send these to Enabled. It's a great cause. It's really how much they do for these kids makes me like smile every day. <laughs> we have five minutes for questions. Does anybody have any questions? How did you come up with this idea? 
He has a wrist. His wrist is in this palm, or like the part of this hand. Okay. And all he does is this, and the hand closes. It's kind of hard for me to put my hand oh, in there. Sure. But <laughs> so basically, all he'll do is this, yeah. and the hand closes. You've been working with these hands, the pretty printers. What's, what's next? Large organizations shows around the world. Well, they're working on doing motor use and like they already have a couple different hand styles out. They really just keep designing different hands depending on what someone likes. So I know some teenager I met at the conference, he said he liked the cyborg hand over the raptor. But I mean, depending on what, I guess there's different hands out there they're building, they're doing stuff every day. They really have designers that are just trying to design different to help kids like do something that like like as Shay did she wanted to learn how to play violin so they designed a go holding device so she could play violin Anyone else? Okay. yeah all the designs are on thingiverse.com or you can go on um, the enabled site and they can probably direct you where you can get it. It's, it's open for anyone to get. It's, you can get it anywhere. What is the life expectancy of some of these creations? I mean, obviously, people can break away with the thing, it doesn't matter. Well, they said they threw this down a flight of stairs, only with a couple scratches. And then mm -hmm. I looked up more and they said they dropped it a couple stories and some of the strings kind of messed up, but these hands are really sturdy. Better than your cell phone probably. <laughs> yeah, probably survive a fall than your cell phone. And it's just, they're sturdy. It's not like it's a clumsy hand. Unless if you have a really bad calibration, then, you know, that's a different story. Yeah. But these fingers, they're sturdy. As he was saying, he's like, they're very sturdy. He could pick up a box with these. With this. Are there options for us to get a yeah, they're actually working on that. They're actually working. I think they just maybe released something that actually is up to like their elbow. They're working on getting the wrist, like besides the wrist, but to the elbow. They're working on getting more of that out. But mostly I looked at this. They said that's in their future 3D prints that they're working on. I think they maybe just released something, but I didn't really look into it yet. Anyone else? I don't think there's a weight fair. I mean, it depends what you pick up. They keep doing studies where like kids will use the hand to pick up things. As he said in the video, he said he was, you know, using it for his daily like activities. So he was like, you know, picking up boxes with it. And I mean, I don't know the weight limit of his box, but I mean, it's pretty strong hand. I think it's better than if you got a regular prosthetic hand. I think it's stronger than that. And it's just fifty dollars versus you know five thousand, ten thousand dollars. So it's like a cheap hand that you can basically make, that can do more weight than anything. I don't know. I haven't. I mean, they had the conference, and they definitely like you know promoted. They actually let families come. They let their children like get free hands. So I don't know if they're doing, fun, I, I don't know if we could do a fundraiser event, but that would be a really good idea to get people to maybe learn how to do these hands. That would be pretty cool. I would, if I could get Marymount like students into like learning how to assemble hands and then sending them out. I know a couple high schools that do that over the weekends. They will print the hands and then they'll build them over the weekends and then send them to Enable. I read that somewhere. So they're doing it somewhere. We're going to be doing it here. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna be we're doing more printers. We only got two, so we need a little maybe like what ten? <laughs> Anyone else? Just one question: Where do you get the material to build the hand? Oh, okay. So this is a PLA plastic. 
Um, you can go anywhere to get it. You can even get it on Amazon. You can get the plastic. It's like in a roll roll, and you can get the plastic on Amazon. And I mean, the other materials, this is just elastic string, and this is just regular string, and the screws are just regular screws, and you can 3D print these screws, so it's like kind of a little easier. They also have assembly kits for the sideboard hand. So, I mean, they have assembly kits. I probably have assembly kits for that, too. They're not really expensive either.